This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. We all growing. Not, we're not all at the same level. You know, we, we're not all getting developed. We're not all getting delivered from the same things. But there's an issue somewhere. Your attitude, how you tweet, treat uh, waitresses and, and waiters. I ain't going to tip them. You ought to stop it. That's how they, they got babies at home. You ought to go in there with the attitude that I'm, I'm going to serve and tip. And if you ain't got no money, say I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry, but I ain't, I ain't got no, I, I, I'll get you the next time. But don't act like it, you know. We, we got that little thing. Where is your manager? Like you, like you, all that. I want to talk to your manager. I said I want grenadine in my Coke. And well, where's the grenadine? You need to go home. You need to go somewhere else. <laughs> that's, that's an issue. Do you want to live a life of grace? Reunite and reignite at Grace Life, the reunion from July 11th through 13th at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia. Ignite your faith with Creflo and Taffy Dollar and an unmatched lineup of speakers, including Andrea Creighton, Gregory Dickout, Inky Johnson, Michael Smith, and Clarence McClendon. Save your spot at the reunion. Text Grace Life one word to 51555 or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Do you, do you understand what it feels like? Do you understand what it feels like to be a preacher and to wake up and wonder if you're going to heaven? Because you hadn't done enough. And then you compare yourself amongst yourself, and then you start doing what you see some other minister or ministry doing because they seem to be doing more. So that means they're going to be more, you know, uh, okay with God than you are. Let's just pause for a moment. That's just too, that's, somebody said, that's just too much. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You think that's too much? Wait till we read this. Are you ready? All right, we're going we're gonna to look at verse 20 through 31. <laughs> Boy, this is heavy. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. That's what we've been taught, though, right? No one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. Okay, now let me explain this. The law was perfect. The, the law is not sin. The law is flawless. The law is perfect. The problem with a relationship with the law is you're trying to take imperfection and match it with perfection. So what's going to happen when you hang around perfection? It's going to show up all your flaws. I don't want to hang around a perfect father. It's just going to show me how imperfect I am as a father. That's what that does. So what God was saying is, you really think you can do this without me? Okay. I'm going to give you something perfect since you that awesome. I'm going to give you the law. And he says, the reason why I gave the law 
was to show you how sinful you are. To show you you can't even go a day keeping it. Not all of it anyway. I heard a preacher one time who says, I keep the law perfectly. I'm thinking, this dude, <laughs> he just broke one, bragging <laughs> and lying. <laughs> Look at verse 21. Look at verse 20. He says, nobody, no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. Why? Because the law simply shows us how sinful we are. It shows you how sinful you are. It was designed to condemn you. It was designed to shame you. It was designed to make you feel guilty and to show you. That's what the law was doing. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. The law, the law wasn't given so you can be saved. If the law could have saved us, Jesus could have just stayed away from the cross and hell. Verse 21. But now, so we, we, we're talking about now under this, under this new covenant. God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. God's made us a way to, to show us to be right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. As was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. Next verse. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. The day Abraham said to God, I believed, Genesis records that heaven said immediately, you're righteous. He said, I believe. Heaven said, you're righteous. Wow. And when you read further in Genesis, you see lying Abraham, coward Abraham, turn his wife in Abraham. And then God turned around in the middle of all of that, glory to God, and transferred wealth into his hands, got his wife back, and used him to bring healing to those who had, been, who had, had a curse on them. I'm like, well, he sure didn't earn that. But God said, I had already declared he righteous. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. How many of you believe in Jesus? But not just believe that Jesus exists, but you believe that because of Jesus, you've been made righteous. How many, how many of you believe that you're righteous because of Jesus? See, here, here's, here's, here's the deal. So you said, you said, Jesus, I believe. He said, you're righteous, all right? So some things, you know, popped off in your life, and you were wondering, uh-oh, am I still righteous? Someone said, what do you do? Go check with Jesus. Uh, Jesus, you still all right? He said, yeah, I'm all right. Well, then I'm all right. Because I'm not all right because of what I do. I'm all right because of what he did. And if he is all right, then I am all right. See, during the time of the, the, the sacrificial animals, you, you couldn't just bring any animal. The animal had to, be, had to be acceptable. And if the animal sacrifice wasn't okay, you ain't okay. <laughs> but Jesus is our sacrifice who will always be okay. And if he is okay, I am okay, you are okay. I thought, this is an awesome, what a gift. This is so awesome. This is amazing. And there are people who turn the TV off and say, I can't hear this man say this. You just trying to justify your sins. Exactly. It has been justified. <laughs> just as if I never sinned. This church is either going to explode in growth or we're going to be putting curtains in front of chairs. <laughs> but either way, 
you and I who believe in Jesus and our righteousness will be able to stand in front of a righteous Christ and hear him say, my good and faithful servant, well done. And then God will look down the ages and he will use us for an example and say, look at what I did to those who didn't deserve it. Look at what I did for those who couldn't do it. Look at my magnificent grace. Well, the gospel has already been preached around the world. No, what I'm preaching is the gospel, and I can assure you this has not been preached all around the world. But it will be. Technology's coming out. I'm going to use it. We're already working on it. They're working on an, an, an AI type of software that will allow me to speak every language in the world with my voice. So I'll be able to go on television or media anywhere in the world and everybody there will think that this black dude preaching their language. I ain't scared of AI. I ain't scared of technology. I'm going to get it saved and use it to preach the gospel. And when this gospel has been preached around the world, then the end will come. I asked God, I said, give me 35 years, give me at least 35 years Strength and strong to preach this gospel. 35 years, I need y'all to agree. 35 years, I need y'all to agree with me. 35 years. 35 years. Uh, uh, and I ain't talking about no 35 years, can't hear, can't see, can't remember where I put my Bible, or oh, it's on the podium. I ain't talking about that kind of 30. I'm talking about Rock and Betty 35 years more. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Still coming here, still sitting out there, still looking good. I ain't studying y'all. This gospel will be preached around this world. Why do you think he called us world changers? But we can't change the world until our world has been changed. If you do that, you'd be putting the, 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 the buggy before the horse. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And every time you see placing your faith in Jesus Christ, it's not just saying, I believe in Jesus. It's saying placing your faith in Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. Now let's talk about that just for a moment. For everyone has sinned, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Now, 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 listen to me. Everybody in this church got an issue. Everybody. Everybody. Every preacher on this planet got an issue. Every preacher. I have to move my neck just to say that, air preaching. <laughs> I, I don't understand this thing we do. When we see what we already know, when, when the issue's revealed, when we see it, then you, you panic as if you magically don't have one. <laughs> and I think the Bible somewhere say, you know, take heed right. lest you fall. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody got an issue. I, I'm already told y'all, I know I got some issues. <laughs> but because I know I'm righteous, I don't have them same issues. I got some different issues today. Well, maybe they, they've always been there, but, you know, I, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm, I'm calming down. But every now and then, the calmness ain't there. Every now and then, I... You know, a word come out of my mouth. Not, not too bad of a word, but you know, when is God like, this is not bad and this is, you know, really bad? It, but I got enough sense to go to God and say, 
that's proof that I still need you. Help me to continue to develop. I'm on a journey. Now, some people see this at church. You're so holy. And you are holy. <laughs> In your stance. But your state still catching up with your stance. We all growing. Now, we're not all at the same level. You know, we, we're not all getting developed. We're not all getting delivered from the same things. But there's an issue somewhere. Your attitude, how you tweet, treat uh, waitresses and, and waiters. I ain't going to tip them. You all stop it. That's how they, they got babies at home. You ought to go in there with the attitude that I'm, I'm going to serve and tip. And if you ain't got no money, say I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry, but I ain't, I ain't got no, I, I, I'll get you the next time. But don't act like it, you know. We, we got that little thing. Where is your manager? Like you, like you, all that. I want to talk to your manager. I said I want grenadine in my Coke. And well, where's the grenadine? You need to go home. You need to go somewhere else. <laughs> that's, that's an issue. You see what I'm saying? Fornicating is, is an issue, but that bad attitude is, is still a same issue. You, you follow what I'm saying? So nobody in here, including the good reverend, <laughs> is without an issue. And some of y'all needed to hear that. Some of y'all needed to, to hear, including me, because for so long, we stand on this pulpit like we are excluded. When in fact, a better leader will be included so that it's easy to follow somebody who has gone down the path, who has crossed the goal line, who know what you're talking about. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. We all short, fall short. Now, what is he describing here in this verse? Inferiority. He is saying because of what Adam did in the garden, every person deals with inferiority. Inferiority saying, I don't measure up. Inferiority that says, I don't feel like I'm cared for. Inferiority, it, this is, it's this thing that men fight, especially that your manhood is under attack because of your inferiority. Because what happens in the life of a man is in order for him to battle his inferiority, he tries to gain a false sense of superiority. This is where racism comes from. Racism comes from, I really feel inferior, but I'm going to find somebody of a different color so that I can pretend to be superior, but it's a false superiority, which will create a false identity and false intimacy because you're now developing under the covers because you're not showing who you really are. And we encounter this every day. We encounter somebody's inferiority complex, and in order to deal with it, I got to figure out how I can be superior. So you beat your wife? The ugly things we do to fight off inferiority, and the only antidote for inferiority is Jesus. That's the only antidote, It's Jesus. Oh, our society, something. I often sit in my kitchen in the morning and turn on the early broadcast and listen to it to judge myself and what can I say better, what better illustration I can use. And then I close and the Lord's dealing with me. I say, Lord, I wonder if anybody in the world even watching this. I remember going to 
to my CEO and I told him this. I said, man, I, I don't even know. Is anybody paying attention to this or am I just laughable? <laughs> he called the head of our television department or the head of our TV thing, TV buys or whatever that is, media. And he had them to put a report together about where we stand, stood. And the media guy came in, Brother Damon, he said, he just, he, he had to hold back his tears. He said, you ain't gonna believe this. And I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> Go on, give it to me. We need to come off TV because ain't nobody paying attention to nothing. He said, Pastor, on the contrary. He said, you are the number one broadcaster on several networks and stations around the world. And he answered the question. He says, you want to know if anybody's watching? And he put something in front of me, the millions of people that tune in every single day to get the gospel. I may never know that. And the whole time the Spirit of God would say to me, you don't, you don't, you won't know till you see me. The impact of this ministry. Now, what did I do when I received that? <laughs> it still ain't enough. There's still some people that need to be reached. They're talking about building condos on the moon. We got to believe for a space shuttle. <laughs> and we got we to gotta get somebody that's going to stay on the moon with them because they, they need Jesus. If we discover, if, if that telescope discovered life on Mars or something, we got to figure out how to get there. They need Jesus. We don't have just the God of the earth. Our God is the God of the universe. Hallelujah. <laughs> He favored us on the planet. What is man that thou art mindful of him, that you visit him, that, that, oh, glory to God, this little dust, why do you visit this man who has been made a little lower than Elohim? That you crown him with glory and honor, the little speck of something that can't even be seen in distant Galilee. What is man? that you chose to live in him. The creator of the universe lives in us. Came down and died for us, went to hell for us, gave us the gift of righteousness, and we let some earthly religious theology talk us out of what he has given us. Believers, are you equipped for battle? In these last days, our minds are the battlefield and arena of our faith. In the five-part series, How to Maintain Your Righteous Stance, Creflo Dollar uncovers how we get the upper hand in this fight. Start focusing in on your identity. I am the righteousness of God. I am righteous because of Jesus, and as long as Jesus is all right, I am all right. He's the acceptable sacrifice. He died once and for all, praise God. I am the righteousness of God today, tomorrow. When I'm up, when I'm down, I'm the righteousness of God. As long as I am focused and still tied in to Jesus, I believe in Him, praise God. He has made me righteous. I receive my righteousness. For a love gift of only 30 U.S. dollars for CD, or 40 U.S. dollars for DVDs, you can grab a copy today. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore. Prepare to win. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. Engage with Christ on a deeper level. Develop your walk with the Lord and strengthen your faith. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. You got to come to the end of yourself where you recognize, I need a savior. I need an advocate. I need a peace offering. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services. You can receive practical advice for applying the Word of God to your life every day with our daily devotionals. There's something about the mercies of God when others want to count you out and stone you and all kinds of things, or pointing fingers, but thank God for Jesus being right there. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, 
and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. The 2020 Vision Partner Program at Creflo Dollar Ministries is more than a program. It's a relationship, a covenant that was designed to make a high impact in your life, our lives, and the lives of millions around the world. Partnering with CDM puts you on the front lines of spreading the gospel of grace to all. Sometimes in life, we face dilemmas and aren't sure what to do. God has given us a grace gift to help overcome the limitations of our understanding so that we can receive clear direction. Introducing Grace Life Academy. With this easy to use platform, you can start learning how to tap into the unlimited prayer power of the Holy Spirit. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access to hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar anywhere and anytime. You can learn in as little as 15 minutes a day. You will gain access to interactive Bible lessons that include features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and more. You don't have to live a limited life. Start experiencing all that God has made available through His gifts of grace. To get started on your 30-day free trial, simply text GLA to 51555 or sign up online by visiting MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. I don't ever want to take for granted that you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And there's no better way to embark upon a new stage in your life than to enter into a personal relationship with Jesus. So if you want to become born again and begin an exciting, intimate relationship with Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me, and I'll, I'll say it so you can repeat after me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died and was raised from the dead and has forgiven all of my sin. And I receive him into my life right now as my Lord and personal Savior. So by faith, I declare that I am saved. Praise God. Now, that simple prayer change your entire eternal destination. And we want to welcome you to the family of God. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.